Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. Let's look at confidence intervals. So a confidence interval is just a range of values so defined that there is a specified probability that a value of a parameter lies within that range. So let me back up just a minute and give you my idea of what a confidence interval is. So I'm going to guess your birthday. Yes, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm going to guess your birthday. With 100% confidence, I'm going to tell you when your birthday is. You ready for this? With 100% confidence, I'm going to tell you that your birthday is be between January 1st, 1970 and January 1st, 2020. Am I right? I thought so. That was with 100% confidence. I knew your birthday was going to be between those two dates. Maybe y'all aren't impressed. You're not impressed that I guessed when your birthday was? Well, let me make it a little bit lower my confidence a little bit then. Maybe I say with 95% confidence, with a 95% confidence level, I say that your birthday is between nine, uh, January 1st 1975 and January 1st, 19, uh, 2015. January 1st, 1975 to January 1st, 2015. Am I right? Well, that was with 95% confidence that I got your birthday. I knew I could guess your birthday. Oh, you're still not impressed. What's up with that? Well, I'll lower that confidence level a little bit. Now with just 90% confidence, you know, now I'm to 90% confidence. I'd say with 90% confidence that your birthday is between January 1st, 1980 and January 1st, 2010. We still there? Oh yeah, still I'm guessing your birthday. I still got that confidence level. Now my confidence is shrinking as my range of values shrinks. And that's really how a confidence interval works just as well. By the way, aren't you impressed? I knew just when your birthday was. That's pretty good, isn't it? Well, that's how a confidence interval works as well. I'm gonna give you a level of confidence that I can tell you where a specific um, parameter lies. And sometimes we use a normal distribution when we're talking about this, where that um, parameter lies. So let's see how that would work with a normal distribution. Well, we know from the empirical rule that 99.7% of our data lies within three standard deviations. So I can say with 99.7% confidence that a value is going to lie between those two digits, between those two numbers, that range, I can have a 99.7% confidence level that the data value is going to fall there. But maybe you're not impressed with the 99.7. Maybe my confidence, in, my confidence level is um, a little bit less than that. Maybe with 95% confidence, I can say that the data value is going to be between these two values. Because again, with the empirical rule, we know that 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations from the mean. Or maybe I want to get even more specific and say, well, with 68% confidence level, just a 68% confidence level, I know that the data value is going to fall between these two um, numbers within that range. But you see how as my um, range uh, gets smaller and smaller, my confidence level gets smaller and smaller as well. Now, that's what the empirical rule, remember that we can come up with those probabilities in between. So if maybe I wanna do it with an 80% confidence level. Well, with an 80% confidence level, it would be somewhere in between that first standard deviation and the second standard deviation. It's just whichever values match with that probability. But that's basically how a confidence interval works. I'm just going to give you a range of values and my confidence level that matches or the probability that matches 
that range. Let's look at the vocabulary that surrounds confidence intervals. So some of these vocabulary words we're going to be using over and over again as we talk about confidence intervals. Uh, first, let's look at inferential statistics. We've moved into inferential statistics. All in inferential statistics is, is that we're going to make inferences or educated guesses about populations using data drawn from a sample of the population. So we're going to pull a sample and get some statistic and use that to help us make uh, an inference about the entire population. And that's what makes it inferential statistics. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to pull that statistic or, or a point estimate. A point estimate is a single value given as an estimate of a parameter of a population. So in other words, again, we pull that um, sample, we find a statistic, we're going to call that statistic that we're going to use to infer about the whole population a point estimate. So that's what a point estimator is. An unbiased estimate is a point estimate that accurately represents the population. Remember that a bias, statistical bias, just tells us how close the um, a sta a statistic is to that parameter. We Bias in statistic is just how close is it to the actual parameter. So we want an unbiased um, estimator which means that we want it to be the same as our parameter. And we saw with the central limit theorem that the mean of a sampling distribution is an unbiased estimator because the mean of that sampling distribution is the same as the mean of our population. We saw that when we did the central limit theorem. So an unbiased estimate is just, um, is gonna give us a good representation of that parameter. An interval estimate is a range of values within the value of a parameter has a stated probability of occurring, within which the value of the parameter has a stated probability of occurring. It's an interval, and we're going to say it has some probability that the parameter is inside that interval. So like I did in a previous video about the birthdays, where I said your birthday is in this range, that's what an interval estimate is. I'm gonna estimate that interval, that range of where I think that parameter is. A confidence level is the probability that the value of a parameter falls within a specified range of values. How confident I am, am I that that parameter is within that interval estimate. That confidence level is really just that probability. How probable is it that the parameter is in there? Now, when we put these two together, when we take the confidence level and we take the interval estimate and we put it together, we call that the confidence interval. So it's just, this confidence interval is just a range of values with a specified probability. It's those two things together. A margin of error, which maybe you've heard in polls, they talk about a margin of error, is the largest distance from the point estimate that a confidence interval will cover. We'll talk more about the margin of error in a later video, but it really, this margin of error, is just um, the standard deviation times however many standard deviations out you want to go. That's what it is. But it's the largest possible distance from a point estimate that a confidence interval covers. Then the critical, critical number equals the number of standard deviations that contain the percentage of statistics. Critical, crit, maybe that's right. Critical number equals the number of standard deviations that contains the percentage of statistics in the relevant sampling distribution. The critical number is just the number of standard deviations out we're gonna go. That's what that critical number is. So uh, it's you know got this fancy name, critical number, but it's really just the number of standard deviations we're gonna go out for our confidence interval. So here are some of the vocabulary words that we're gonna use 
um, throughout as we talk about confidence intervals. Let me just give you a small visual to go along with these. So I'm going to show you on a normal distribution and a confidence interval and what these different words are. So we know that a sampling distribution, we know that the mean of a sampling distribution is an unbiased estimator. It's going to be the same as the parameter. Or, and then we know that that sampling distribution has a no, nice normal shape. So I'm going to show my standard deviations here and um, draw myself a normal curve like the sampling distribution would be. So here's a nice normal curve with those standard deviations. And that mean then is that, um, uh, that unbiased estimator. Or if we find a proportion, we saw that the proportion is also an unbiased estimator. Now, the interval estimate is just the range for where I say the parameter is going to be. I'm going to um, claim that the parameter is somewhere in this range or somewhere in that range. That's my interval estimate. And then the probability that goes along with that is my confidence level. So, you know, it, within here, the probability it falls in there is 68% by the empirical rule. The probability it falls in this interval estimate is 95% by the empirical rule. Now, when I put those together and I say with a 95% confidence level, the parameter is going to fall within in this range. That's a confidence interval. It's got to have that confidence level and then also the, the interval, the range that, that we have. Then the margin of error, well, let's say that I have a 95% confidence level. The margin of error really is just this amount. Whatever that distance is, is your margin of error. I know 95% is out two standard deviations. So we're going to learn later that the margin of error is just your standard deviation times that critical number of how many standard deviations you're out. So that distance right here is your margin of error. And then the critical number tells me out how many standard deviations. Well, for 95%, my critical number then would be two because I'm going out two standard deviations. So there's some uh, vocabulary that we're going to use as we continue to talk about confidence intervals. Let's talk about the margin of error. First, in order for us to be able to use a normal distribution when finding these confidence intervals, we need to have three conditions met. First, all the possible samples of a given size have to have an equal opportunity of being chosen. In other words, we're choosing a simple random sample of whatever sample size that we're looking for. So it's remember when we talked about those sampling methods where every um, member must have an equal opportunity to be chosen? So we're using a simple uh, random sample there to choose our sample. Then the population standard deviation has to be known. And then either the sample size is at least 30 or the population distribution is normal. So these things have to happen in order for us to be able to use the normal distribution. Now, this is a little bit weird, this knowing the population standard deviation because if we know the population standard deviation, then that means that we know a lot about that population to begin with. And so it, it's, it's actually not that often that we use the normal when we're doing confidence intervals and here in a little bit hypothesis testing, but I'm gonna use normal here and within our lessons just to make sure that you have a good understanding of what we're doing when we're building a confidence interval and then later when we do hypothesis testing. So now we're gonna find the margin of error. And what the margin of error is, is for our confidence interval, that margin of error is just our number, our critical value. So we call this the critical number. 
And that critical number is just the number of standard deviations out that we are going in our confidence interval. So this is just the number of standard deviations. It's a fancy notation for critical number, which is just the number of standard deviations, times whatever the standard deviation is for our sampling distribution. Or you can say, well, it's the number of standard deviations out. And since we're dealing with, this, with a sampling distribution, we know to find the standard deviation of that sampling distribution. We have to do the um, standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of our sample size. Remember doing that with the central limit theorem to find that standard deviation of our sampling um, distrib uh sampling distribution. Okay, so let's do an example. A hardware manufacturer produces bolts used to assemble various machines. The manufacturer wants to estimate the mean di diameter of bolts produced using a simple random sample of 36 bolts. The standard deviation for the population is known to be 12 hundredths. Calculate the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval. Okay, just making sure that it meets those three conditions. First, um, we've got a, a simple random sample that, that we are choosing. Second, we know the population standard deviation. We know the population standard deviation is 12 hundredths. And third, we have at least 30 um, in our sample size or the population is normal. Well, we have at least 30 because we have 36 bolts. So it meets the condition for us to be able to use normal. Great. Since that, we're going to be able to find this, use our um, central limit theorem. Let's find our margin of error here. In order to find the margin of error now, I'm going to take my critical number, which is the number of standard deviations, times my standard deviation. Well, in order to get that critical number, or how many standard deviations out I'm looking, I'm going to look at my confidence level. This probability is really what I'm looking at. So when we see 95%, we think to ourselves the empirical rule tells us that's out two standard deviations. So we're just going to use that two standard deviations. There's more precision to that. If you go into higher statistics or if you take another statistics class, they might use 1.96 out 1.96 standard deviations. We're just going to use two because this 95%, that empirical rule tells me that I'm out two standard deviations. So my critical number there, the number of standard deviations I'm going out is two. Then I'm going to multiply that times my standard deviation. In other words, if I go out one standard deviation, two standard deviations, what's that distance I'm going out? How far out is that? So I just need to calculate my standard deviation. Well, I now have a sampling distribution because I've pulled a sample. So I take, remember to find that um, standard deviation of the sampling distribution, we take the standard deviation of our population and we divide it by the square root of our sample size. Now again, now I'm just going to do some arithmetic. My margin of error is the number of standard deviations I'm going out, so two of them, times whatever the standard deviation is. So in this case, 12 hundredths divided by 6. Well, then my margin of error is 2 times, well, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and that 2 is out in the hundredths place. So my margin of error is going to be 4 hundredths. So what does that margin of error mean? Well, when I'm talking about my confidence interval, I'm going to use that margin of error. So when I start talking about the confidence interval, how confident, I'm 95% confident that some value, some statistic falls within this range, that margin of error is that, that distance out. So let's say I'm dealing with means. 
that margin of error is two standard deviations out. So in other words, I go out one standard deviation, I go out two standard deviations. This distance here is gonna be 0.04. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end to make my confidence level where I, at, I take that margin of error and I'm gonna go out one standard deviation, two standard deviations, so I'm gonna go out 0.04. That margin of error is just that distance. How far out am I going in that confidence interval? So that tells you a little bit about how to find your margin of error and then what it's used for. Let's find some confidence intervals when we're given the margin of error. So first problem says, a hardware manufacturer produces bolts used to assemble various machines. The manufacturer wants to estimate the mean diameter of bolts produced using a simple random sample of 36 bolts. The sample mean is 4.4 millimeters. So we went out, we collected a random sample of 36 bolts, measured the diameter, and found a sample mean that is 4 and 4 tenths. If the margin of error for the data using a 95% level of confidence is 4 hundredths, Construct a 95% confidence interval for the means of bolts. So here's what we've done. We've created, we found a sample mean. And remember from the central limit theorem that that sample mean is part of a sampling distribution. So that sample mean is part of a sampling distribution. And in that sampling distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution should be about the same as the should be the same as the parameter mean so our entire population mean and we're trying to find that population mean so we're going to um, create this interval where we're going to say well we know based upon what we found with 95 percent confidence that the parameter that population mean falls between these two numbers and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our sample mean, we're going to take our sample mean, and we're going to add our margin of error to it. And then we're going to take our sample mean, and we're going to subtract our margin of error from, uh, from that sample mean. So we're going to do the, both of those things. We're going to subtract the margin of error, and we're going to add the margin of error, and that range we're gonna say with 95% confidence that the parameter is within that range. Or if you think about that sampling distribution, what we're doing, our mean that we found, that sample mean is at 4.4. And then I'm really going out two standard deviations because of this 95% um, confidence interval. Remember with your empirical rule, the probability for 95% is out two standard deviations. So I'm really going out two standard deviations. And this margin of error tells me that that distance from the mean out two standard deviations is four hundredths. So I'm just adding that four hundredths to the four and four tenths to get four and 44 hundredths. Then I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to go back those two standard deviations. Well, the margin of error is that distance that is two standard deviations. So I'm going to subtract that four hundredths from that four and four tenths, or you could say four and forty hundredths. Subtract four from that and you get four and thirty six hundredths. So my confidence interval with 95% confidence is my confidence interval is from four and thirty-six hundredths to four and forty-four hundredths. And I'm saying with 95% confidence that confidence level that the population mean is going to be between somewhere between four and thirty-six hundredths and four and forty-four hundredths. So that's what that confidence interval is, is once I find this sample mean, 
I can now, with a certain level of confidence, tell you where the population mean there is. So let's do another example here. A college student researching study ha habits collects data from a random sample of 250 students on her campus and calculates a sample mean of 15 and 7 tenths hours per week. If the margin of error for her data using a 99.7% level of confidence is 7 tenths hours, construct a 99.7% confidence interval for her data. So remember, all we're going to do is take this sample mean and we're just going to subtract our margin of error and then we're going to take our sample mean and add our margin of error and that's going to be our confidence interval. So let's go ahead and do that first. So this 15.7 minus my margin of error of 0.7 is going to be the low end of my, my um, confidence interval. And then my 15.7 plus that 0.7 is going to be the high end of that um, confidence interval. So I do the subtraction, I get 15 to 16.4. And she's saying that with 99.7% confidence level, that the, the population mean is going to be between 15 hours of sleep and 16.4 hours of sleep. So if you think about this mean is part of a sampling distribution. And remember when we've drawn that sampling distribution before, we put that mean here in the middle. Then the margin of error tells me the distance well, this one's for three standard deviations out. My critical value would have been three. So one, two, three out. That margin of error is telling me this distance, which that distance here was seven hundredths. I mean, seven tenths, or maybe I should do it this way here. This distance is seven tenths. I could do the same thing this way. One, two, three out. That distance is seven tenths. So we're saying with 99.7% confidence that the parameter mean, that population mean, is going to be between 15 and 16.4 because that, that mean there is an unbiased estimate. So that's how we can find the confidence interval when we are given the margin of error. Let's construct confidence intervals. So we're going to use our inferential statistics. We're going to infer about an entire population based upon a sample. In our first example, we have researchers want to estimate the mean monthly electricity bill in a large urban area using a simple random sample of 100 households. <clears throat> the researchers find the sample mean of $120.45. Assume the population standard deviation is known to be $15.50. Construct a 99.7% confidence interval for the mean monthly bill. So here, we'd like to be able to use a normal distribution to help us to find that confidence interval. And remember, in order to find to use normal, we need to meet three conditions. The first condition is, is that we have a simple random sample, that every sample has an equal chance of being chosen. And sure enough, we've collected a simple random sample. Secondly, our sample size has to be at least 30, or the data needs to come from a normally distributed um, data set. Here, our sample size is at least 30. 100 is at least 30. And then the third requirement is that the population standard deviation is known. And here, our population standard deviation is known to be $15.50. So we can use the normal curve. When we collect this 100 um, households and we find that sample mean, we know that sample mean is part of a, a sampling distribution that is in that normal shape. Now, we want to... Um, 
we want to create a confidence interval to say with 95% or 99.7% confidence that we know that the parameter mean, the population mean, falls within a certain range. So we've collected this sample mean and we're gonna infer from that sample that our population mean falls within this certain range. In order to find that confidence um, interval, the first thing we need to do is find our margin of error. And remember to find the margin of error, we take our critical number, which that critical number is just the number of standard deviations out. So for 99.7%, that probability using that empirical rule for 99.7 is three standard deviations out. So our critical number here is three. We're gonna take our critical number and we're gonna multiply it times the standard deviation. And that standard deviation is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So, you know, we've collected the sample mean and that sample mean is part of the sampling distribution. And the mean of that sampling distribution should be the same as the mean of the population. We saw that with the central limit theorem. So we're gonna find the standard deviation of that sampling distribution. And the way we do that is we take our standard deviation of $15.50 and we divide it by the square root of our sample size of 100. So I'm gonna take my three and my $15.50 divided by the square root of 100 is 10. So I'm taking my three times, we'll divide 15.50 divided by 10 and I get $1.55. Multiply that out three standard deviations. So that tells me one standard deviation is out $1.55 but I want to go out three standard deviations. So I'm just going to multiply three times that 55. So three times five is 15, carry to one. Three times five is 15, plus my one is 16, carry my one. Three times one is three plus one makes four. So there I have $4.65 is out three standard deviations. That's that distance from my mean out three standard deviations. I'm gonna take that margin of error, I'm gonna add it to my mean, and I'm gonna subtract it from that sample mean. So first I'll do the subtraction. I'm gonna take $120.45, and I'm gonna subtract the $4.65 that's out three standard deviations. So a little bit of subtraction here, that's 119, gives me 14, which is eight, which is $115. That's gonna be out three standard deviations below that mean. Then I'm gonna go up three standard deviations from the mean. I'm gonna take my margin of error and add it to my mean. So five and five is 10. That's 11, carry to one is five. So $125.10. Um, so my, my confidence interval is from $115.80 to $125.10. With 99.7% confidence level. I'm 99.7% uh, 99 confidence. I can say that the parameter mean, that population mean monthly electric bill, falls between, is somewhere between $115.80 and $125.10. I'm 99.7% confident that my parameter is going to be somewhere between those two numbers. Let's do another one. In order to estimate the number of calls to expect at a new suicide hotline, volunteers contact a random sample of 49 similar hotlines across the nation. And they find the sample mean is 42 calls per month. 
Construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of calls per month. Assume the population standard deviation is known to be 3.5 calls per month. So three characteristics to be able to use normal. Number one, simple random sample, check. Number two, sample size is at least 30, check. Number three, we know the standard deviation for the population, check. So we can use that normal distribution. So again, this sample mean of 42 is part of this sampling distribution. And we know the mean of that sampling distribution is going to be the same as the mean of our population. So we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval. So this time that 95% tells me that my critical number is 2. I'm going out two standard deviations. So that fancy notation that we saw for our critical number, this just means the critical number is two. We're gonna go out two standard deviations and it's because of that 95%. I'm first gonna find my margin of error. To find my margin of error, I take that critical number and I multiply it by my standard deviation. But remember, I'm not dealing with the standard deviation of the population. I'm talking about the standard deviation of this sampling distribution. And the standard deviation of that sampling distribution is the standard deviation from our population divided by the square root of our sample size. So here I have two times, well, 3.5 square root of 49 is seven. So we got 2 times 3.5 divided by 7. Well, 35 divided by 7 would be 5. The decimal stays, so I've got 0.5. So 2 times 0.5, 2 halves, 2 times um, 0.5 equals 1 whole. So my margin of error is 1, is one unit, is 1 call. And that's out two standard deviations. So now to find my confidence interval, what I do is I take that mean and I subtract that one. And I take the mean and I add the one. So think about that sampling distribution. That mean is part of a sampling distribution. And I know out two standard deviations is out here to 43. Back two standard deviations is 41. With 95% confidence level, I can say that the parameter, the population average number of calls that we get is between 41 and 43. So that's what that confidence interval does for us. We it helps us to infer about the entire population when we have a sample mean. And we can do that because that sample mean is a nice unbiased estimator. Math made simple is some math. Thanks for watching.